About a week ago, Google announced their latest multimodal AI model, Gemini, rather a family of models. Gemini boasts impressive capabilities and has been trained across multiple modalities of data, such as images, text, code, audio, and video. Gemini comes in three different sizes. Gemini Ultra, which is their best and most capable model. However, this is also the most computationally expensive model. Gemini Pro, which has enhanced performance, but also deployable at scale. According to the Google's technical paper, Gemini Ultra achieves human expert level performance on the MMLU task, which stands for Massive Multitask Language Understanding. This is a dataset that consists of multiple choice questions from 57 different academic and professional subjects. Beyond text, Gemini Ultra has also topped the MMMU benchmark, which stands for Massive Multidiscipline Multimodal Understanding. This is a dataset that has questions about images which require college level subject knowledge. Gemini model is built on the transformer decoder architecture, but it has been enhanced with improvements to the architecture, training stability, and to support inference at scale. Google, Google's technical paper, unfortunately, doesn't disclose what the exact improvements are. These models have been trained to support the 32K context length, similar to GPT models. As of yesterday, Gemini Pro is publicly available on Vertex AI, GCP's ecosystem for building and serving machine learning models. In this video, I put Gemini to the test side by side with GPT-4. Keen to know which model did better? Stick with me in this video and find out. I tested this model on seven different aspects. Common sense reasoning, aesthetic understanding, entity recognition, data analysis, design analysis, and text extraction, some miscellaneous tasks related to data labeling, and finally, math. The questions I asked are not straightforward questions. Some of these questions require multiple steps in order to derive the final answer. Some require strong visual reasoning and the ability to localize information in the image. Before we get into the core of the video, a few disclaimers. This is Gemini Pro, not Gemini Ultra that we are testing. So we're not seeing the ceiling performance of the Google Gemini family of models. These models rely on a hyperparameter called temperature, which randomizes the answer that it generates. Therefore, if you run these exact prompts, you might see different results. Finally, it's not an exhaustive test by any means. This is just to give a flavor of the capabilities these models have. So let's look at the first task. The first task we have is common sense reasoning. And the very first task in common sense reasoning is look at a photo of a clock and tell the time. Gemini seems to be do that quite well, but it's not the best start for GPT-4 because GPT-4 doesn't seem to understand this photo. Next, we have a photo of several fruits. We're going to ask the model to count how many apples and how many oranges are in the photo. As we can see, there's two oranges and one apple. It seems like both models are quite good at them. This involves identifying the different fruits in the image and counting them. It seems like both models can do a pretty decent job. The third question we got in common sense reasoning is this. Given this photo, is the person taller than the thing under her hand in the image? This task requires the understanding of the physical world model needs to identify that it's the Eiffel Tower and infer that humans are typically smaller than the tower. Both models are quite good at understanding that this is an optical illusion and able to answer the question correctly. The second task is aesthetic understanding. We have three different photos. One is overexposed, the other one is underexposed 
and the other one is reasonably well exposed. We want to see if the moles can understand this characteristic. For the first photo, which is overexposed, both Gemini and GPT does a good job. It can quite well understand that it is an overexposed photo. The second one, however, is interesting. In the second one, Gemini seems to think it's overexposed, not underexposed, but GPT still manages to provide the correct answer. In the final question, both Gemini and GPT identifies that this is a well-exposed photo. And you could also test on other aesthetic characteristics, such as subject composition, good post-processing, and etc. The third task we have is entity recognition. Basically, what we are trying to see is whether the model can understand the person or the object provided in the image and provide contextual information about that particular person or the object. I have a photo of Novak Djokovic, who is a tennis player, and I'm asking the model to write a one paragraph bio about this person. The model actually first needs to identify that this is Novak Djokovic, find the information about him, and then write a bio based on that information. For this question, GPT-4 seems to take its time. It took more than two minutes in order for GPT-4 to start producing the answer. One thing to note is that Gemini's answer is in fact a one paragraph answer. GPT-4's answer is quite lengthy and consists of several paragraphs. I also asked the two models to write a poem about this person. Both models seem to be doing quite a good job. For example, Gemini produces, In the realm of tennis, a legend was born. With a racket in hand, his destiny adorned. One thing to note is that Gemini for some reason seems to produce non-English characters while producing this poem. The second subtask in this entity recognition task is to we give the model a dish and ask it to find the ingredients and the step-by-step -step guide to prepare this dish. Both models are quite good at identifying this dish. The recipes it produces obviously are slightly different to each other, but both models seem to identify the main ingredients such as penne pasta, parmesan cheese and spinach. Next, we have somewhat of a difficult task, data analysis. So this task requires the model to understand the information which is scattered around the image and extract the relevant information. In the first subtask, we're going to give an image of a table from a website and ask the two models to extract the information. Again, both models seem to do a reasonable job. But Gemini's response seems to be cleaner. For example, in the rating field, Gemini is able to extract only the rating and not the number of reviews. It's difficult to say whether that's a feature or a bug. Nevertheless, I like Gemini's response more than GPT's in this case. I'm quite impressed because both models were able to extract text from the logos in the first column. There are typos, obviously, but both models have been able to do a reasonable job. The next question we have is a tricky one. We have a world map with different colors for different regions and the percentage of internet users per region. We're going to ask, what's the percentage of internet users in Switzerland according to this image? This task requires passing multiple steps for the model. First, it needs to identify that Switzerland is a country in Europe region Find the color for the Europe region and then go to the legend on the bottom left and get the number which is 82 from that legend. Again, 
Remarkably, both models are able to produce the correct answer. You can see that Gemini produces a comprehensive explanation of how it came up with this answer. In the next subtask, we have a dashboard of summary statistics, which is quite detailed and lots of information present. We want to see if these models can extract specific information from this expressive dashboard. Both models do a very good job at extracting the answer to the first two questions. Note star MAU and the number of new customers that the company has acquired this year. The last question, however, is a tricky one. It requires honing in on that pie chart, identifying the largest percentage and associating that with the legend on the top. Both models do not seem to be able to cope with that. Okay, now comes the design analysis and text extraction task. The first task we have is pretty simple and straightforward. We have an invoice and we want the model to extract all the text in this invoice. GPT does quite well on this task. Gemini seems to exhibit a glitch. For some reason, it seems to think that the response it generated violates Google policies. I tried with different variations of the prompt, but Gemini was not able to get past this filter. Then we have an Instagram post where we have a bunch of text and this is about a tourism ad. Again, we want to see if these models can ex extract text despite the busy background. Gemini and GPT both demonstrate that they're very good at extracting text. The next task I have is a little bit difficult. So I have a presentation slide and I want to see if these models can extract structured information about this slide. So it's not just extracting the text, but also understanding what each text element belongs to. So I want the output in this specific JSON schema, which starts with a heading, and we have a list of subheadings where each subheading has a title and text. Finally, we have images, which will have three keywords that describes each image. And to my surprise, both models were able to extract the text, put it into this very JSON schema, and produce the exact result I wanted. Now we're going to move on to the labeling task. In this, I have a somewhat random set of tasks. These tasks are related to the insurance industry, more or less. The first task we have is we have an aerial image of a set of houses, and we want to know how many houses in this image have swimming pools. Out of the two answers provided, Gemini seems to get closest to the actual answer. Gemini seems to think there are 13 swimming pools, however, I can only see 12. GPT's answer is a bit far off. Having said that though, I can't be sure whether Gemini got to this answer because it actually understood the swimming pools or was a happy coincidence. Then we have a relatively simple task. Provided an image, it needs to identify the type of damage the property has sustained and provide the output using a specific format. The type of damage could only be either fire, storm, flood, robbery, or unknown. Again, both models supersede my expectations. They're able to identify the exact type of damage that is displayed in these photos. Another question I asked is to write a detailed damage report about a damaged car. On this task, Gemini seems to be a little backwards and provide a very concise summarized description of the type of damages, but GPT-4 goes into great lengths and provide a very comprehensive report. I particularly like the amount of details it has been able to extract, for example, the model has been able to extract that the airbags have deployed, 
which is a very small part of the image, but still manages to extract this kind of important information out of the image. Finally, we have the math question, a quadratic equation, and we want to see if Gemini and GPT-4 can solve this equation given some A, B, C values and provide the correct answer. GPT-4's answer is in fact correct, and you can check that by doing a simple Google search with this equation and assign those values in place of A, B, and C. Gemini gets quite close to the answer. So if you look at the last step, which says five plus or minus square root 217 divided by eight, that exactly is the step before the last in order to reach the correct answer. But for some reason, it cannot get the final answer correct. So there might be some opportunities to do prompt engineering. We can do chain of thought reasoning, and that might help the model to reach the correct answer. Here are my main takeaways. Overall, I think both Gemini and GPT exceeded my expectations. I'm blown away by the ability to extract text, understand layout and structure in the images. Due to the temperature, these models tend to produce the wrong answer at times. So there's obviously room for testing the best temperature and better prompt engineering. Gemini seems to have some glitches which get triggered based on certain prompts. Several examples of these were shown in this video. This leads the model to behave in unexpected ways. But I didn't see this in GPT. Gemini is much faster than GPT when producing results. Perhaps GPT's UI has an effect on this, but I wouldn't be hesitant to believe that Gemini is much faster than GPT because the Google technical paper suggests that the model has been optimized for inference. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos on machine learning, artificial intelligence in general, subscribe to my channel, Deep Learning Hero. I will see you soon with another video.